back. You're still watching Morning Live. Now, Naked Knitting and Other Contradictory Acts, Last Cow Standing, Exhibit S, Order to uh, Saki Barban, are some of the productions that were headline the second annual Cape Town Fringe, uh, which kicked off on Thursday. The lineup of over 70 productions includes theatre, music, dance, performance, art, illusion, and comedy. Shows will be held at various venues in the city centre of Cape Town, including City Hall, Alexander Bar, uh, The Few God, and the Waterfront Theatre School's Galloway Theatre. Now to tell us more about the festival, we're joined from our Seapoint Studios by its artistic director, Ishmael Mohammed, a man no stranger to a National Arts Festival as well. Ishmael, good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me here. OK, let's talk about the Fringe Festival and give us background into what inspired uh, you to establish a festival that focuses on fringe theatre. The Cape Town Fringe is a project of the National Arts Festival in Grahamstown. Uh, we were looking for extended opportunities to extend our, our business to be able to make the festival sustainable. The city of Cape Town was looking for an opportunity to present the arts as, uh, as an extension of, of their cultural offerings in the city, but also as an attempt to grow the industry and to create tourism opportunities. There was synergy between our vision and their need, and hence the Cape Town Fringe was born. Uh, a number of the artists who are performing at the festival in Cape Town are artists who have had success in Grahamstown, coupled with a number of newer artists who've created new works for this production, for this festival. And this year there's a uh, wonderful development in that, apart from just the works that have come from Grahamstown and new, uh, new works that have emanated from Cape Town, there are at least two international productions as part of the festival as well. All right, and you kicked off on Thursday. Give us uh, a program of what's been happening until today. The hub of the festival has been at the City Hall uh, with four venues there and, and a wonderful music venue, the Standard Bank Arena as well. Uh, the productions often kick off from about 10 o'clock in the morning and continue to about 10 o'clock at night. There is a wonderful program of entertainment for families. Uh, so, so a family can come and see productions ranging from children's production to magic shows to a number of variety shows and music shows. But for those looking for real serious content, there are serious theatre productions. Uh, there's dance for uh, dance lovers, contemporary dance lovers. And of course, there's an open air performance of... Uh, at the waterfront as well. Uh, so the hub is at the City Hall, but with extended venues at the Fugard, the Jubilee Hall, and the waterfront as well. All right. And what's going to happen in the next couple of days in uh, the build-up to the 4th? I think there's going to be a great deal of excitement. The momentum has built up with audiences growing. Uh, productions have been getting really wonderful reviews as well. Uh, and, and I think we, we're seeing the, in the second year of the festival that it's really beginning to become a force. Uh, audiences are beginning to trust the productions, given the fact that a number of them have been tested already at the festival in Grabstown. Uh, it, it, it means that it's a lot more easier for audiences to spend disposable income on work that they know they're going to enjoy. And how do you decide which venues to host the festival at? I mean, it's, it's hosted at various venues around Cape Town. Well, we, we, we try to create work that uh, suits, you know, technically does suit those particular venues. Artists do provide us with their technical specifications. But given the fact that it is a festival that is uh, not centralized in one particular venue, but one that goes to different venues, we try to make each of the venues exciting, uh, but to try and create a diverse program of work at those particular venues, where we're using extended venues such as the Fugard and the Galloway Theatre. We also look at the vision and the mission of those particular theatres so that the work that we present in those, in those theatres does complement in some way the work that they doing. Uh, an innovation this year is the use of the Gugu Satebe Hall in the township. Uh, the Gugu Satebe Hall is a project of the City Council of Cape Town, who are the major sponsors of this festival, along with Standard Bank, who have come on board this year. Uh, we've tried to create work there that uh, would speak to a community that is surrounded uh, or, or surrounds that particular venue, but we're also taking work that is new, because part of the uh, experience of a fringe is to take work to people that speaks to them, but also to expose them to newer work that brings them back 
into a theatre to want to explore the excitement that comes along with the arts. Let's talk about um, improvements going ahead. You started off last year, this is your second year. What were the challenges that came with uh, being two years old? Well, you know, last year we, we, we got the deal with the city of Cape Town quite so, soon after the National Arts Festival and we immediately got into planning the festival. This year we had more time to engage with Cape Town arts organizations. We held a consultative forum at the City Council to talk to artists about how they experienced the festival last year, what were their challenges and what are their expectations of the festival. Uh, a lot of that discussion that came out of a consultative forum was drawn into the program. We put together a little panel that looked at the, re at, at the various proposals that we had uh, so that we, we, we drew three, at least three people from Cape Town onto that panel so that the voice of Cape Town artists is strongly represented in, in our programming vision. Uh, there's also uh, imp massive improvements, I think, in, in the way we, we're marketing and, and profiling the festival. Uh, our website is incredibly accessible. Uh, there's, there's an active social media campaign that is constantly updated with, with, with reviews and comments. Uh, that audiences and artists are sharing. Uh, and I think it's while the festival does exist in, in the physical spaces, there is a wonderful digital space in which the festival is also reaching out to people outside of the city of Cape Town. All right. Ismail Mohammed, thank you so much for talking to us. Good luck with the festival. He's the uh, artistic director of the second annual Cape Town Fringe Arts Festival, which uh, runs for 11 days. They kicked off on the 24th and runs until the 4th of October with 70 productions to choose Thank from, you. with more than 60% of the artists hailing from the Western Cape. Thank you very much. From the